Hello crafty cuties! Today's video we are going to make some pretty papers and we are finally starting the Dollar Tree Junk Journal Challenge. If you want more information or if you would like to see me shop for the Dollar Tree items or do a haul and explain the challenge just a little bit more, I'll link those videos down below. Um, so for today's video, we're basically going to start prepping the papers. We're going to make some coffee dyed papers that you see here on the left and some beautiful marbled papers that were so much more fun than I thought they would be. And we'll also gut the book and do a few other things to start the Dollar Tree Junk Journal. If you want to join along with me, it's just kind of a casual challenge. You can totally follow along, make your Dollar Tree junk journal, and we can always comment down below and kind of give other people ideas for things that you might be doing. So let's hop into the video. Let's go ahead and gut this book first. And so basically what I'm going to do is I'm gonna first of all try to kind of pull this away from the actual spine here because there is a little area, and it's gonna be hard to show on camera, but right where my pointer finger is that connects the title page right here to the hardcover. And I'm going to try to get in there with my scissors and basically cut all the way down. And it's um, since it's glued right here on the side, you can sort of pull that away if yours is um, super tight and so that's why I kind of like try to pull it apart first and so I'm gonna go super slow with this because remember I want to use this cover with the spine if I can um, and so I don't want to cut through the actual spine but I will say I've done it before when I didn't mean to and if that happens we can still make it work we can bind it up because I will be covering this um, book cover and so We'll make it work if, if it happens. Okay, so I'm gonna first cut that part. And then you can see that that left us with some areas of kind of like a glue or probably a, like a book cloth. And so I can see now, it's hard to show on camera, but I can see close up where I need to get in there a little bit better and cut. And again, you gotta be really careful not to cut through the actual cover but I'm just gonna do this all the way down I'm using scissors that I know work good for this and then I'm going to do the same thing to the other side and then we will be left with a book cover and a text block Almost there so we'll just finish this one up together there we go I did it okay so now you can see and then this side is much easier so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this piece off and I'll be right back all right so we have our book cover now I just kind of like to get that out of the way and we have our text block which I wanted to cut off because I'm going to be dying some of these pages so I am just going to randomly pull some pages out I'm not going to coffee dye all of them but And I'm even gonna coffee dye some of these blank pages because we might be able to use this for, you know, some type of embellishing. Um, and I will absolutely be looking for any like images because that's kind of really going to be fun to add into our journal. Um, I did try and look for a book that had some really cool um, images, but I couldn't find any today. But like, I think that's really pretty and that could add to you know a pocket or something like that so I'm just gonna grab a handful here I can always come back and coffee dye more I'm kind of giving it a guess so we'll just call that good for now we're gonna set these things aside I have my papers I also like to just kind of go ahead and pull these off the pad now because when your hands are all dirty from the coffee, it's just easier to grab from a pile than it is to have to tear off. And I think I'm gonna grab like, oh, 15 pages to start with. Something like that, I'm not really counting, probably 15 or 20. I think that's gonna be just fine because we are gonna embellish a lot of these pages too. 
but if I need more I can always add in some more white pages or whatever and then I think I'll just grab a couple of these actually these are these make it real easy to go ahead and grab a big bunch like that okay let's go ahead and get our coffee dyed solution ready so you're gonna need your pan I'm gonna go ahead and fill this halfway up with water I'm going to take my coffee here instant coffee and I'm not someone who measures but I'm just gonna put a bunch in there because I want it to be pretty dark but I never measure and then I forgot to mention earlier that I might try some marbled paper as well and so not sure if I'll be able to get that done in this video or not. I think a lot of people know how to coffee dye um, but some people I know are kind of intimidated to try so I wanted to be sure and get the entire process of the journal making into um, the videos for you guys. I'm just using my hands but totally wear some gloves if you don't want your hands to get coffee dyed because they will turn rather brown. <laughs> and then I have some paper towels here to help sop up some of the water as we go along. And I did forget to mention that the Dollar Tree does have plastic napkins, but I already had some from Amazon, so I'm just using the ones I already had. The Dollar Tree has stencils now, which make a really great um, design on your coffee dyed paper. So you can go ahead and kind of lay your stencils down first, and then you put your papers on top of it. Now, um, I only have a couple plastic doily mats and so I'm going to slowly be drying these in the sun. I do like to dry these kind of either either overnight or in the sun. I'm just gonna lay them down here on top. The only reason why I'm not layering these is because I'm trying to get the print on most of the page but I do actually normally go ahead and I'll fold my page like this so that I can get a bunch on one tray but that's not going to show very much of the design if you have them all folded so um, not a big deal but you'll see okay and then another tip if you're trying to get a design from like a plastic doily or mat like this is you don't want too much excess coffee now we can come back in here and either spray some really really super strong coffee or like an ink spray if you have to help the print show a little bit better i just had a little extra of the design here so i'm just going to fold that over and then I'm going to take another mat and lay it right on top. And you can probably see I used to have, I, or I don't know if you can see the brown on here, but I have used this to spray inks over and these work really great. So now I'm just gonna lay this down and I'm gonna get some of my white pages, dip those in and then layer those on top. I'll probably do like three layers on this one coffee, um, I'm sorry, on this one cookie sheet not too much because again, I want these to dry rather quickly for me. So just dip it in and lay it down. Now, if you don't have any types of stencils or doilies like this, you can go ahead and just layer them on a pan or out on a area where you're fine with keeping them overnight. Now, if you did wanna go ahead and dry these in your oven, I recommend doing it on a very low setting um, I usually do like 250 to 300, but I keep my eye on it really, really good. So you can decide what works best for you, but we have a really hot day right here. So I'm just going to let these dry and hopefully I can show you the end result. Um, probably maybe in the next video or something like that. Okay. And I'm just going to do one last layer. So I'm just going to lay that down right here. It doesn't cover the entire papers, but that's fine. I have one more cookie sheet. Um, that I will go ahead and utilize. So I'm gonna finish dipping these all in and just layering them up and then we're gonna let them dry. And so this was rather quick, so I think I will also go ahead and maybe try some marbled papers. Okay, so I have my two trays out in the sun drying. I did want to mention, I do not recommend putting these in the oven if you are using one of the plastic napkins because they absolutely can melt, so don't do that. And I'm not gonna tell you how I figured that one out. 
For the rest of this paper, and I forgot I had some envelopes I wanted to decorate, I'm going to try a very simple marbled paper technique. And we're gonna use shaving cream. I got that at the Dollar Tree along with these tempera paint watercolors. Um, hopefully they're gonna work fine. We're just experimenting. And I also have some white acrylic paint to hopefully kind of make the colors a little bit lighter. So to start off, I'm gonna put um, I'm gonna do red, yellow, and blue, I think, and I'm gonna put each one in a little shot glass. I'm gonna water it down just a tiny bit and add some of the white, and we'll be right back. I have the colors diluted to the best of what I could do, and now I'm just gonna put a layer of shaving cream. I wanna try to make this go as far as I can, so I'm just gonna do a thin layer. And then I'm gonna take my paintbrush, just because I'm using that to smooth everything down, just kind of try to smooth it all across so it's all kind of even. And then we're going to take our diluted paints and kind of pour them over the top of this and use the end of this paintbrush here to try and get kind of some marbled effects. And then we'll go ahead and dip the papers in. Hopefully that's flat enough on top here, um, but so we'll just try it out here. I'm just gonna take some of the yellow, and remember I added a little bit of white paint, and then I added a little bit of water just to kinda dilute it and make it go a little bit further. I know this doesn't look great now, but we'll just, we're gonna work with it and just kinda go like that. These little paints are pretty small. There's not a lot in them, so I just wanted to make it go as far as it could. Now, I like how that pink turned out. I'm gonna take this and basically just make some shapes. Now, you could totally spend more time on this and probably really make something pretty, but we're just kind of experimenting here. I don't really wanna mix the colors, so I just wanna make sure that it's all kind of marble looking. You'll want something to scrape off the excess shaving cream. I just have my ruler here because that's just, I couldn't find anything else. We're going to start with the envelope first just because I think it'll be easier to do a smaller piece. And so I'm just going to basically lay it down right in. And you really want to make sure to kind of press it in there so that all of the paper touches some of the paint. Okay, we're going to lift it up. I think I remember it looking really crazy at first because there's a lot of excess. And I'm gonna take this and just basically scrape everything off because we just want the kind of the first impression of Okay, not not too bad. Like that. And we're gonna obviously let it dry. That's pretty cool actually. Okay, so we'll lay that down. Now, the only thing is, is now that this paint right here is kind of mixed in, um, I feel like you don't have that many times to kind of dip your paper in, but let's just go ahead and maybe I'll try an actual paper sheet. We'll go ahead and dip this paper in. I had to cut it down just a little bit, so I'm not too sure what kind of an impression we'll get where we already had the paint. I think you're supposed to kind of add more paint every time, but we had all of this area, so I can actually kind of see through. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and pick this up and put it on my little area over here. Kind of move that out of the way here. It gets pretty messy, guys, it really does. I just laid this right down on the other little pile of shaving cream, but that's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and just scrape that off. Wow, that's actually pretty satisfying. Oh my gosh, I'm really excited. Now the key guys is to make sure to scrape off all of the paint and shaving cream because that's how you will like kind of get your little marbled area revealed. Okay, I wanna go ahead and do another, but I think that means we're gonna have to put another layer of the shaving cream and then more paint because if we just put it over this now, it's just gonna be all muddy. So <laughs> we'll do one more together here but this is quite addictive. Let's go add another round. I think I'm gonna try to be more mindful about where I put the colors this time. I'm gonna do the yellow, and I made this one quite a bit dark, uh, lighter this time. So I'm just gonna 
probably could have got more but like I said this paint there's not that much paint in these and I want to maybe be able to use some for another part of this journal I'm not sure if I'll need it okay and then we'll do the pink I just realized I did that one pretty thick but okay <laughs> Then I'm going to take this and okay, probably need a little bit more color in here. Maybe if I just do the little swirls like closer together. Yeah, I can't. I actually am excited to try this with my daughter. She's going to love it. Okay, and then we'll go across like this. Okay, we're going to go ahead and take this for a dip. Again, just try to make sure to press that in. You can honestly see the design that you're going to get through the paper. Can you guys see that? So that's kind of cool because really all that's going to stay on the paper is that very first impression of whatever design you have. So you can totally make specific designs, I would think, and it will, um, you know, print onto your paper. All right, let's go ahead and pick this up. This part is so messy. Okay. And here we go. You probably could scrape all of this right back into your area here, but then the paint is definitely going to get a lot more muddy quicker. Okay, so I'm going to try to do this a little better this time and just scrape it all off. Sorry if the camera is out of view there. Whoops. This is super fun. Yeah, I totally... It, it's definitely time consuming, but totally worth it. Wow, this this looks awesome. I'm excited for this. <laughs> Whoops. Just gotta be careful when you're scraping so that you don't rip your paper. Alright. Alright guys, I love this one and now that I feel like I kind of got the hang of how to make different um, designs, I could go on forever. But I'm going to have to stop the video here. I am probably going to continue making a few more of these off camera, but I, so yeah, I will, in the next video guys, I will show you all of the final pages of the coffee dyed paper, the marbled paper, and I am really hoping to actually make our own paper in an upcoming video, so stay tuned for that. I have all the supplies, the Dollar Tree supplies, and we can make our own paper for some really cool tags and things for this journal. I hope that you guys liked this video. Stay tuned, of course, for the next episodes where we will continue prepping and making everything for our Dollar Tree junk journal. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.